Hi, hello, how are you, Amanda? Sane artist, you got your makeup. Now what? Now what do we do? We've got our palette, this is a palette eight, and you've got your makeup, you've got your cute little sachet, and you don't know what to do now. I'm gonna show you how to set up your palette and how to set up your face. All right, so we're gonna get started with a palette eight. This is what I like about my palettes. I like the main part of my face on the top layer, my creams on the top layer. My second layer are my powders. I've got my setting powder because I have oily skin, and then I've got my eyeshadow and a cleaning tile right here. This is my preferred way of setting up a palette. Creams, if you have any of your eyeshadows flake or break, it'll get into your creams and then it's a whole mess. So keeping them separate is key. All right, next, let's set it up with our tin. So we're gonna open up our little sachet bag and we're gonna open up our beautiful tins. Woo! These are tiny but mighty. These are 80% pigmentation. We are essentially putting on one layer of makeup. So let's get started, all right? So my first color is Athens. This is my main highlight color, pink. And we're gonna set this in our palette first. To me, the biggest rule is keeping your main highlight and your brightening highlight side by side because sometimes they can be fairly close and it's really just a matter, this is white peach, this is my brightening highlight. They are so close that having them side by side, you can tell which one's lighter and which one's darker. A little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And when you separate them and you have colors between, it can sometimes be hard to tell the difference. The tins, you can keep one and you can use it as a way of popping your tins out. They just slide in between and then it just pops out like a little spatula and it's handy to keep at least one. You can toss the rest, keep the rest. I have a pretty little jar full of them and it's whatever you want, but they do not go upside down on the tins and slid into your palette. They are just lids. That's it, just a lid. All right, this is my contour. This is cedar. It is such a pretty color. So when you get color matched, I recommend a lot. Sometimes there's color correction, sometimes there's not if I don't think you need it and I think that your four highlights can do the job. I won't recommend a corrector. And so when that happens, it's just these four colors. This is the basic setup. Your main, your bright, your main highlight is your foundation. Your brightening highlight is a concealer. You have your contour and then we have a pretty lip and cheek color and they all slide in together, and all four of these are foundation. This spot guy right here is foundation. This guy right here is foundation. That's why you essentially need one layer of makeup. I'm gonna be using one brush. Most people want bronzer. I don't have it in today's palette, but it does come in a collection that saves you $11. So I think this is a great one and done brush. The other brush that I always recommend is the detail brush. This is also a one and done brush. But for the sake of today, we're just gonna use one brush and I'm gonna show you how easy it all is. All right, so when you're using your four colors, we're gonna go in first into our main highlight. I find this is the easiest way the first time you're applying your makeup and we're just gonna work our way down the row. Main, brightening, contour, blush. So we're gonna go into our main highlight and we're gonna stamp in. You can see there's just barely any. When I say these are tiny but mighty, I mean it. This will last you four months at least if you're an everyday makeup wearer like I am. I like a good medium to full coverage and I just tap and build. I always start at the bottom of my face and I balance out my skin tone right here. Just, I have discoloration, I got stuff. And so I just start down here, I bring it in over my chin just to cancel out the redness that I have on my chin. Grabbing a little more, I have scarring that goes on right here. So I'm gonna bring that up and over my scarring into the crease of my nose where I have redness. And my main highlight is Athens and it does have a tone in it that helps to fit, to correct and cover discoloration like rosacea, like acne scarring. I used to have horrible cystic acne. And so this is the only real place that I put my makeup. I do have darkness under my eyes, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of my main highlight and I'm gonna go over my under eye here and I'm just gonna cancel that out. And this is the only place that I am going to be putting my main highlight. I've skipped this little area here and it's really under my eye, over my scarring and balancing my skin tone here. Let's go to the other side. And this for me is the easiest way, but you see how it just erases the discoloration? A good match works as an eraser. It looks like you're just taking off all of your problems. <laughs> if only it could work for real life. But we just tap this over the scarring, balance out the skin tones. I like the stippling method. I am 43, so I have maturing skin. And I find that the stipple method helps get it into all the little nooks and crannies and fine lines and wrinkles and pores the best. 
and it gives a skin like finish when somebody says it's a skin finish that's not accurate makeup will always look like makeup but it should look like good makeup and so it has a skin like finish it will look like makeup but it will still also look like your skin i'm going to tap into both my main highlight and my brightening highlight and i'm going to go just along the jawline here because my neck is always, always, always lighter than my face. And so using my brightening just to lighten up my main highlight just a little bit helps bridge the two together. All right, the next color I'm going to go into is my brightening highlight. And I'm gonna do this, this is basically taking the reflecting light, you can see the light reflecting off my face and accentuating it. And we're just going to give ourselves some dimension using some brightness, which is already naturally there because the sun <laughs> the sun, the light, we're going to go down the bridge of the nose and we're going to hit the cupid's bow and the tip of the chin right here. That's where light naturally reflects. I'm going to use my finger here. And we're just going to add a touch of brightness on this inner corner instead of a shimmer. I don't like shimmer on my inner corners because I have maturing eyes and it just makes it look a little extra mature if I put a shimmer there and I bring it down past my trough and then I'm going to add a little bit right here. And I just use my finger to tap it out because under your eyes is a very high texture area and less is more. And you can just use this tapping your finger. The warmth of your finger just helps move the product in a really great way. All right, that's it for brightening. And now we're going to move on to the next tin, which is our contour. Again, I'm using cedar. This works really well if you have freckles, if you have hyperpigmentation. This is a really great contour. We're going to add some right here and right over here. I don't go super punchy on my contour I like it to be an accent I would say cedar stone ash and olive are really great contours if you are in the fair skin tones and bronzers pull too orange on you these are really great options because they're cool with a touch of warmth so I bridge them together along the hairline turn your five head to a forehead and then I bring it down towards my brows for that little touch of warmth I'm going to flip to this fluffy and I'm going to Pull that brightening. You could even add a little more if you feel like you need to. Get the hair out of the way. And you can just bridge them together. And as that, as the light color that's a little too light for your skin, creating that brightness and that dark contour come together, they balance out and create a balanced, covered, and dimensional space. Forehead. I can do a forehead. Like, my forehead's nice, okay? That's the place where I have the most confidence. When I meet people, I'm like, check out my forehead. All right, <laughs> we're going to go into our contour again. And I have a natural shadow here. We all do for our cheekbones. We're going to go just above that at the base of the cheekbone. I like to pull mine up just to give myself a slimmer, less round look and accentuating that natural shadow as we mature the volume in our cheeks breaks down and so I don't bring it super low I come I don't come in any farther than my outer corner so we're grabbing some more of that cedar contour and we're going to come right over here I have a hyper pigmentation spot I'm just going to pop that on top of it and it's going to help camouflage it a bit cedar is a really great color for hyper pigmentation it has a similar tone to it and can give you the coverage you want and I under blend my cheek contour because I'm going to be adding blush and so it's going to blend it down more and I don't want to blend it away. All right, back into it and we're just going to chisel out the jaw here. This is pretty simple. In front of the earlobe, down the jaw. Grab some more. You never want your bristles sticking together. In front of the earlobe, down the jaw. Super simple. So forehead, cheeks, jaw. Boom, boom, boom. It's like the three, but we're not taking all this product and smearing it all over our, our, our face, not our full lace. All right, next I'm going to do my nose. I prefer using my fingers, so I put it on my ring fingers, and I come down both sides of my nose. I overcorrect. I have a bump, and then I follow that natural shadow to my brows. So I grab it. I drag it down on the top side, overcorrect on my bump. And then I just empty my fingers off on the tip and square it off. I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to pinch it and I'm just going to blend this out. Now I had added my brightening highlight to the center. And so we're just going to tap and blend this out. And then I can take my finger and just sweep it down. You can add a little more if you want and just sweep this down ever so slightly. It's such an easy little trick. If you have a crooked nose, if you have a bumpy nose like I do, draw your contour onto the sides and then just draw a straight line down the middle of your nose and it straightens it right out easy trick easiest easiest part it takes a little extra time on the nose for me but i don't care 
All right, we're gonna go into our blush next. I love this color. And because again, the volume of my cheeks is going down, I take my pink and I go up top on this side. And then because I have a lot on my brush, I'm gonna just bring it over here too. I'm gonna smile so I can see where my cheeks are. And then I'm just gonna bring it up just like that. Boom. And I have a nice light cheek. Take that fluffy brush. This is a great starter brush because it's a good medium coverage brush. I have a hair on it. Medium coverage brush. And then this fluffy end helps you if you feel like you've over applied, which is very common when you first get your makeup and you just swirl this over. Now, again, I said I have oily skin. So I'm going to take Urban Decay D Slick. If you tell me you have oily skin, I will likely recommend either Urban Decay or Charlotte Tilbury as your setting spray. Saints is wonderful, but it's very hydrating. And for me, I feel like it, it takes me from dewy to greasy very easily. So I use the slick. I'm going to spray my face. And then while it's still damp, I'm going to go into my setting powder on my lower layer. I'm going to take my fluffy brush. And then we're going to start on the perimeter and we're going to set it and bringing it in. And you just keep loading the brush. But anytime you load your brush fresh, start on the perimeter of your face and then bring it in. Powder is a lot like glitter. Even if you don't think it's there, it's there. And so when you think your brush is empty, start working on your mid face and under eyes because powder is always going to change the texture of your skin. And so taking it and putting it right down the middle is going to thicken it. It's going to give that powdery texture. So I always start on the perimeter and work my way in. I am going to add a lip color. And so I'm going to do a little bit of contouring. I'm going to grab a little bit of contour. I'm going to put a soul patch. And then I'm going to take what's left and I'm just going to sweep down my Cupid's bow. It's almost like outer lining, but without that drastic outline where people can see where your lip stops, but your lipstick doesn't. <laughs> so I add a shadow instead of adding an outline. I'm going to also use, I didn't grab a brush. I need a multitasker brush right here. And I'm going to use my contour as my lip liner. I like using a lip liner or a contour because it's dense. And I go just to the edge of my lip here. It helps with mature lips. So I have lines. And when you have a dense barrier like a contour or a lip liner, it keeps it from bleeding out. I remember my grandma used to always have hot pink lines coming off her lip because it would bleed in anyway so we're going to line it with a nice dense contour and then i'm going to go into my pink here that i used on my cheeks and we're just going to fill it in we're going to let them work together so i'm going to fill in and then i'm just going to use my finger to blend it all together and it just creates this really nice neutral pink i I love it. I will say when you're using a satin finish, like a lot of our lip and cheeks, this is pink lemonade or pink grapefruit. I'm sorry. We're going to put that in. We put that on when you're using a satin. It can be very drying on your lips. So grab a gloss. I'm going to use Saints Oil. I will let you know when this comes back in stock. Hopefully soon, especially in time for summer. <laughs> and that's it. Now I'm going to go do my eyes and I will have a picture showing the final result. But this is the starter kit. You have your mane, your brightening, your contour, and your blush all together. Just keep these two together. That's my biggest rule. Keep, toss your lids, whatever you want. Second layer is great for having your powders. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Most of my recommendations when I color match you has this combo. Drift, Claire, and Oak. Oak is also my brow color. I like something that does more than one thing. And so when you have that, having a nice cleaning tile here. This is Coco. I'm going to be using it as my eyeliner today. So enjoy the picture at the end of me doing this. But this is a great place to start. This is your starter kit. So message me for a color match if you're watching this and you're interested. But also, this is what you do when you get your makeup. You got your makeup and this is what you do with it. And it gives you this really beautiful finish that's as bold or as, as full or as light of coverage as you want. It's entirely up to you. This is your full coverage, but this is also your light coverage. If it is summer and you're just doing your SPF on your face, but you want it to be tinted, you can mix this with your SPF. You can mix this with your mo moisturizer if you would prefer to have something customized. You can make it. You can customize the color. That's all I'm going to say. But 
That's it. That's what you do with your makeup when you get it. That's how you set up your palette. That's how you put it on your face. We lay it in the palette. We lay it on our face. And that's it. Have a great day.